use the Ender 3s uh, in the Curious Forge. First, we need to figure out what we want to print. Uh, that will be an STL file. You can get that from a CAD design package, computer-aided design package that you're designing your part in, or you can search online in a online library like uh, Thingiverse. Let's go there now, and that would be Thing, T-H-I-N-G, I-verse, B-E-R-S-E dot -E com. Here you'll see a, a library of different parts you, uh, um, things you could print, um, you know, hose adapters, I've done plenty of those, <laughs> a tie, um, but uh, today, you know what, I have a bunch of loose cables by my bedside that I use to charge my phone and, and headphones and whatnot, so let's go to, um, let's search in this search bar right here, search USB, B, USB or organizer. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. Also, like uh, SD card holders. That this would come in handy. Um, uh, this looks pretty nice too. Side mount. There's a top mount. I think I like that. I think I like this top mount. Let's see what this looks like. So once you click on it, you can go right here to download all files. And here you'll see all the files. Sometimes they're different files that you can print. Sometimes they're uh, all included. Um, this is a, a lot here. Let's go to a simpler model, actually, just uh, for demonstrative purposes. Um, let's go to this side mount. This looks good, too. I like this. Okay, so we can go up to download all, all files, or we can go down, which will be the same thing, just click Thing Files. So um, this one, I guess, has some screw holes. This one, I guess, doesn't, which is just kind of taped, I guess. Let's just do a simple one. I have some double-sided tape that I can tape to the, my bedside. So as you can see, uh, it downloaded here. It might look different for you. You might get a pop-up window that'll say, do you want to open this? Do you want to save it? Um, just hit save. And uh, uh, that's that file will then go to your downloads folder. And it might look different for you. I'm on a Mac, but e every computer has a downloads folder. And from here, you can uh, just open up um, Idea Maker for you. If you're using the computers at the Forge, there should be an icon that looks just like this Idea Maker, and it should be on the desktop somewhere around here. So I open that up. I can go ahead and close this window. It's just a welcome page. And let's make this larger so you can see what I'm doing. Um, now to import models, I can hit this button right here. I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. Now you should see downloads here on the side. It may look different for you because you might be on a PC, but every computer has a downloads folder here on the left. So you click on the downloads and you should see your uh, file up here somewhere. Uh, note the same name that I had on here, USB cable holder. That's this right here. I click on that. Notice this says STL. That's the right file type I want to load. I open that up, and here we go. So uh, to navigate in Idea Maker, you can left click and drag around. You can right click, oh no, I'm uh, right click and drag around. I'm sorry, right click and drag around. You can middle mouse button and drag. And then you can scroll the wheel to zoom in and out. So again, that's right click on the mouse to rotate around. Middle mouse click and hold to pan around it, 
and then middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So uh, once I have this, uh, it looks good like it uh, already came in. Sometimes if models come in this way, you want to snap this flat face on the ground right here. And to do that, it's an easy trick. You just select the model that you want to edit or move, and then you hit uh, Shift L if you're on Windows or Shift Command L if you're on a Mac. So again, that's Shift L if you're on Windows and Shift Command L on Mac. Uh, alternatively, you can right click on here and then go down to lay flat and you'll see the quick command there for it. Now once uh, you're in quick command you'll see all these little triangles pop up. If you have a high density model you'll see a bunch of black like this but if you zoom in they're just a bunch of small triangles. So um, I want to designate which face I want to lay on the bed and that would be one of these big faces right there. See how I clicked it and it turned green? Once it's green, I go over to the left here and hit apply. And there you go. It snaps it right back down. Now we're in still still in lay flat. Um, uh, so I go up to view and that'll give me my normal uh, viewing. So I don't see those triangles anymore. To uh, start slicing this object I'm going to go up here on the top where it says start slicing and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this says Ender 3. You can click this and if it doesn't and find Ender 3 make sure that is selected. Uh, the only material that is uh, supported on the Ender 3's here at the Curious Forge is PLA so uh, we just make sure that says PLA that'll say four templates and here are our templates. Uh, we can go fast. Fast will obviously uh, uh, make a fast print but it also loses detail and uh, we can go up all the way to medium to fine to ultra fine. The uh, finer detail you go the slower the print will be uh, in most cases, I find that medium is good for most applications. Uh, so uh, I have medium selected. I can either double click to get this uh, menu up, or I can go over here to edit. Now you'll see the infill density uh, that is the inside pattern. Um, this is the amount that in, uh, fills up. Typically 10 to 15 uh, is all you're going to need. Uh, shells can differ uh, depending on which uh, profile you use. That usually never has to change. You just leave that alone. And here we have platform additions and support. Platform additions are things that um, help you attach uh, parts to the build plate or the printing bed. Uh, we have the skirt. Uh, the skirt provides uh, a few lines uh, to bleed out the, uh, the extruder. On the Ender 3s, we don't really need that because um, it has that built in. You'll see when it's printing on the left, it'll do a small little bleed line. And you'll see that when you're printing. Brim, however, we may need or the raft. Let's see what the brim looks like. And we'll turn off the support. We'll save and close, and we'll slice. You see it brings up this menu. Um, this will uh, show the estimated time and uh, give you the price. So here I use the QR codes, and I will round up to a dollar and um, pay a dollar using the QR codes. So I will go to preview to see what that brim looks like. And you can see this purple here. This is what the brim does. 
So the brim offers more surface area to attach to the build plate if you have thin features sticking out. And that's a, um, that's a good idea. Uh, however, if you still have more um, uh, problems, you can use what we call the raft. Double click this time, and I'll use the raft. Save and slice, and we'll preview that as well. And now you can see the raft builds up this whole platform for whatever you're printing. And I'll use a slider down here and show you that the raft gets built before the print even begins. So this is the raft. And this you would use for uh, things that aren't really adhering to the bed well. If you have a lot of support that is being built off of the bed, um, it's a good idea to use a raft. In most cases, about 99% uh, the, using a raft will help with any uh, bed adhesion issues that you have. So uh, it's built off and that's the part that then gets built onto the raft. Now we'll go back to slicing, go back into the details. I'll turn raft off and now I'll turn supports on. slice that and we'll see what supports get made with this you can see all of this gets supported now now this is an easy way to just automatically add supports oh I don't want to export it I'm gonna close the preview you can also manually add the supports here make sure this is selected and you can do the manual supports here. Create auto supports. In this case, it didn't create any auto supports. But if we still slice it, and we make sure that support is on, it'll still add those supports. And looks like uh, I'm happy with these results. I always use a slider down on the bottom to preview what is going to be printed to see if I miss anything. Looks good to me, so I'll go ahead and export this. I have already inserted the SD card. And oh, looks like it didn't. And reinsert it. There it is. And I will save this as it's asking me to replace it because I already had one on here. Yes, I do want to replace it. And I will reveal in Finder. Might be different for PC, but this just helps me. Um, eject it on PC you can right click and you'll see an eject just like this and eject it and now I'm ready to take that SD card to the Ender 3 and start printing 